All right, guys, so we've been talking a lot about terrain association, terrain features, and things like that, but now we're going to put those into play with a little something called route selection. Route selection is very simple. You get out your map, you look at the terrain, you get your compass, you pre-plan a route that you would like to go and figure out exactly how you're going to try and get there. You, you know, plot your points on your map, take your compass, get your azimuth, do your conversions, as necessary from grid to magnetic. You also plan your distances, make sure your pace counts in order, and get ready to move across the terrain. The route you take is going to determine how well and how quick and how safe you get there. All right, so if I'm navigating in my little uh, sandbox here, there's some things I'm going to put on my map, and one of them is going to be called a checkpoint. A checkpoint is a place that I feel like I need to put on my map to realize that I know where I'm at during my navigational process. So for example, if I was traveling in this direction across the terrain, I would feel that a good checkpoint is a very recognizable feature, the crossing of the railroad and the highway right here. Because that way, if I ended up at that railroad and that highway and it matched up on my map and it was still in the direction of travel that I was going, I would know for certain that I'm still on a good heading. Another navigational aid that's going to help you out a lot is a little something called handrails. Handrails is using nothing more than linear features to help you move quickly and swiftly along your navigational path. You know, we do a lot of dead reckoning where we're looking at our compass and guiding on a direct path and direct azimuth and counting our pace count and things like that. But we've, if we have handrails to use in an advantage, sometimes we don't have to pay quite as much attention to that and can move faster. For example, we could use this linear train track right here as a handrail. Say we're over here a couple hundred meters and we're on this path. We could use this as a handrail to a guide, as a guide knowing that it's over there right beside us the entire time we're navigating up through here. And we won't have to look at our compass as much, but we will have to use our map and do map checks to make sure we're along our route where we're supposed to be. But we also use this as a navigational aid. One thing I also use in my route planning is what's called decision points. For example, if my azimuth was heading in this direction across these train tracks and railroad tracks, and I knew that there was on my map large vegetation, lakes, and things of that nature, and my objective was to get to this mountaintop. I would mark on my map this as being a decision point. And what that simply means is once I arrived at the crossing of these train tracks and that road, I would look to see what's in front of me, and I might need to make a decision to work around obstacles, a better route, a better way to get to my final objective. Something else you ought to identify on your map during your route planning is what's called catching features. A catching feature is a, something that you're going to want to mark past your objective to ensure that you haven't gone too far or too far off route one way or another. Let's say, for example, I was traveling right through here. This was my azimuth. And I was actually heading for this hilltop, but somehow I thought this hilltop was the one that I was on a line of march for. So as I come through here, you'll notice we have a set of railroad tracks. We're going to call this our catch feature. Simply put, I look on my map, I shouldn't be crossing railroad tracks to get to this hilltop. If I've crossed railroad tracks, I've gone too far or in the wrong direction. That's what we're going to call our catch feature. Another thing you're going to want to think about when you set out navigating is what's called steering marks. Very, we looked at this a little bit during the dead reckoning phase, picking an object downrange and walking directly to it. And basically that's a steering mark. For example, if I was navigating this field right here, and my final objective was this hilltop, and I was coming up right through here, and I could shoot in my azimuth directly to that hilltop as my final, this is my steering mark. I don't need to continue to shoot azimuth and work my compass between here and there. I'm simply going to walk to this hilltop because that's my final destination in this particular instance. All right, while you're out navigating, you've got your route plan and things like that, you might find out that offsets will come in handy. For example, I would be navigating, say I navigated up to this intersection right here, and my final objective was the end of this ridge right here. Well, I'm not exactly comfortable with this route. So I'm going to do what's called an offset. 
I can see on my map that there's road intersection down here. So what I've decided to do, as opposed to walking a straight line to my objective, I'm going to walk to this offset point and then take the azimuth from here and come to my final destination. So another technique you might recall that we used in the field was called boxing or man maneuvering around an obstacle. Let's show you what that really looks like on this 3D model. So say for my example, I'm coming out of the wood line right down here. My azimuth takes me to this cliff, which is where I need to end up on the top of this cliff right over here. I have a problem with super dense vegetation right here. I'm never going to be able to navigate through it, so I need to navigate around it. This is where we use our boxing technique. Boxing goes like this. We've already talked about it, but let's do it again. You come up to your obstacle, 90 degrees, reshoot your azimuth, 90 degrees, reshoot your azimuth, 90 degrees, and pace count back to your line, and get on your azimuth, and continue to march. That's how you negotiate an obstacle, and we call that boxing.